Um, my name's Arnie Lerma. I run Lerma.com exposing the con. It's been up since 1994. All right. Um, a decade ago, I got a phone call from a gentleman who said he had information concerning the death of Lisa McPherson. And he described um, that she had given a security guy a black eye and the chief of security said, this is not a good thing, this woman giving my guys a black eye. And she was forced into a footlocker. If you look at those autopsy photos and look at the bruises, they don't make any sense. You look at them and you go, how did that happen? I've been looking at them for years and gone, you know, what happened? Until I heard this. If she was in a footlocker, screaming and straining to get out. All those bruises and marks on her body suddenly make perfect sense when you look at the autopsy photos. Did you all hear that? Yeah. Good. You didn't hear me. Uh, all right, I'll try and face that way some more, all right? Is the sound coming out down there? Oh, oh, there. Come over here. There's some more seats. The mics are online. The mics are online. Oh, hi, online. How are you guys doing? Anyway, um, I, I didn't know this was going to happen today, but the gentleman that called me that day 10 years ago to inform me um, what happened to Lisa McPherson is here with us right now. I suggested that he... I suggested that he not use his name, not that it would, it would really make any difference at this point. Um, but he wants to tell you his version of that same story as he related to me 10 years ago. All right? I'd like to introduce Anonymous. For starters, Lisa McPherson was working for a company, a company called AMC, at AMC Publishing for Benetta Slaughter. And when she was working for Benetta, she had a mother that dearly wanted to be with her daughter. So her mom says, please come to Texas and be with me because I'm getting old. You're going to be in charge of the family estate and we need you in Texas. Can you take a year's leave from your job? She introduced to Benetta, Benetta went ballistic, Benetta went to her friend David Miscavige and said, we can't let her leave, we gotta do something. Get her to clear quick, and then we can spring the non-interference zone. So we gotta get her to clear. Well, guess who was her CS? David Miscavige was Lisa McPherson's CS at Flag and watching all the videos, and they ran her to clear as quick as they could so they could then surprise her with the non-interference zone. So what happens? They get her to clear, and then they tell her she can't leave. And her mother is saying, honey, come home, come home. And she says, I don't know what to do. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> uh, it proceeds into fighting, leaving the Fort Harrison, spinning tires, whipping past the stop sign, to going two blocks and plowing into another car. Gets hit, there's an injury on the driver's side, a little bruise around her knee apparently. And she sees Sea Org people racing down the street two blocks to find out you know, where is she, what's going on, and she decides to take off her clothes. Why would a woman in broad daylight take off her clothes unless there was something seriously wrong? Now, we can speculate whether she was under the influence of some chemicals, maybe, but she certainly knew that if she got undressed that she would be admitted to the psych ward. Surely she was a young woman with enough intelligence, having served a year in the Sea Org, in case you didn't know that, Lisa McPherson served a year in the Sea Org. So, the ambulance people wrap her up in the blanket and take her to Morton Plant to the highest floor, I guess it's like the sixth floor of security uh, for uh, people on a psychiatric care. Osa, quickly, with the class 12 auditor, whose name is, first name is Alan, uh, figured out and got papers in, ready in a hurry and ran to the hospital and went to see her and said, I'm, I'm her auditor, I'm her minister. So under the guise of being her minister, slipped this paper in front of her and said, if you don't sign this, you're in the shock department. They can electroshock you. You don't have any idea how much damage they can do. Sign this, we'll get you out of here. 
She begrudgingly initialed it because she was terrified of being harmed. Then they take her back to the Fort Harrison, to the cabanas, second floor, a little west of the swimming pool at the Fort Harrison. In the cabanas, she's there for a few days. During that time, guards are showing up with black eyes, uh, bloody mouths, bloody noses. She's fighting the piss out of them and whipping these guards, and they don't speak English. They're Hungarian and picked for their inability to have a rational conversation with her. She's in a room that can't be exited because of the number of guards and, and locks and mechanisms to keep her captive. As the security chief is complaining that there's too many guards that are showing up with black eyes, we can't maintain our posts if she continues um, disarming my force. So they came up with a brilliant plan. Late, late, on the third or fourth night, they got a large footlocker, big enough for her body, and literally gagged and bound her and put duct tape over her mouth, punched an air hole so she could breathe, and carried her in a van off the Fort Harrison property late at night to a building that had been a room that was specially constructed at the Hacienda Gardens on the northern central side of the Hacienda Gardens where Sea Org members who had left the Sea Org a month later said, uh, we can't take it, we can't take it. What were they talking about? About the screaming that was going on while she was incarcerated and, and still able to make noises. The room was soundproofed. It had uh, fiberglass and then plywood boards put over the windows and extra uh, solid doors. The room was constructed to be a, a uh, prison to keep her while she was under the uh, rundown. Uh, before this happened, the day before she had the wreck, she was talking to one of her girlfriends who happens to be a friend of mine. This girlfriend and her were talking about chubby women and do men like to make love with the chubby women and they were having fun laughing about her weight which was about 146, 47 pounds. 147 pounds is uh, 27 pounds heavier than she was a couple weeks later when she was no longer living. How did she lose that much weight? She did like Gandhi did. What did Gandhi do? He went on a starvation diet because he was complaining about the fighting. She went on a starvation diet because she wanted to go home to her mother and she wanted medical help. The medical Scientology doctor that prescribed the medicines uh, was called in near the end of her life, about 70% through this event, and he prescribed sedatives and other... Uh, Chloral hydrate. So she didn't have a chance to continue fighting. And on top of her, this... Uh, lady whose name uh, was uh, forged in the Lisa McPherson's trial. She uh, allowed the court reporter to get her name wrong and she went, mm-hmm. So her name is not even in there. Um, Barbara Winneberg uh, was sitting on top of Lisa with a turkey baster, shoving it down her throat, trying to make her eat because she was not eating and they were determined to not let her continue to not eat. Nearly gagging and choking, uh, she aspirated and with the uh, medicine that uh, you just heard uh, went to a state of unconsciousness moving towards death and as you all probably know the medical records were scanty and pages were torn out and the part about even being at the Fort Harrison and being carried out uh, was not even brought up in the courts at all they didn't know um, the that the, the logs were, were lost and, and or doctored but the, her travel from the Fort Harrison the first week to, this, to a specially constructed jail room at the Hacienda Garden is not public knowledge. And when Arnie and I were talking a decade ago, uh, he published uh, something which called the Miswithhold on the Footlocker, which set OSA into a panic. You, you can talk to me later if you think of a question. Thank you.